I'm Joel Tetzloff with Yamaha, and we're here to give you an overview of the DTX 502 Touch app. The DTX 502 Touch app interfaces with the DTX 502 module. It's an iOS app, and it makes using your 502 module as simple as operating an iOS device. Not only will you see the great features and benefits from our overview of the app, but you'll also be able to see how versatile the DTX 502 module is. What you'll need to get started is an iOS device. You can download the app from the Apple App Store and it's completely free. Let's take a look at the app. You'll notice right away that we have a visual representation of the drum kits, making it easy to navigate which kit you're on. And because the app is bi-directional with the module, it means that I can interface the module with the app or I can use a data wheel to scroll through the different kits. Now, going to edit a kit, there's two ways we can get there. One is by pressing here, or we can press the edit up here. Now you can see all of the trigger inputs in the back of the DTX 502 module. Instantly you can see visual representations of each instrument, and then down here you see there's the bank of instruments or the categories, and then the voice that we're on. What's great about this being bi-directional again is the fact that I can preview any of these instruments just by playing and switching. This makes it very efficient to get to different instrument groups quickly. Now, you'll notice here too that I can select each instrument on the iPad or because this is bi-directional, I can actually track whatever instrument I want to change. Makes it very easy. You notice down here below, we have our tuning, muffling, so for instance, Muffling or sustain, long sustain, short sustain. Adjust all those parameters right there quickly and easily. We have the volume of each of the pads that we're editing, the panning, and down here's a nice feature, the lock pad. So if we're doing some heavy editing, we can turn that on. And in case we actually hit the hi-hat or the kick tower while we're editing, it won't switch to that pad. So that actually locks out the pads. And then the kit save. We can save all of our kits into a user location and we can custom name it as well. Now that we switch some voices around, let's take a look at layering or stacking sounds. Here we have under the detail menu, we can go into the kit voice menu. Right away, you'll see we have layer A and layer B. That means we can actually layer another sound on top of our snare drum. If we go to layer B, you notice there's no voice assigned to this. Now we can go in and assign a voice. Maybe we want a hand clap or another snare drum layered over top of this. Uh, maybe a tambourine. We can go back here now and we can choose between stacking those voices, playing at the same time. You have a crossfade or as this is uh, labeled X fade option or a velocity switch option. And notice down here at the bottom, again, we have the volume, the tuning, the panning, again, of each layer, whichever layer we're on. We can change those parameters, the decay, cutoff frequency, MIDI note, MIDI channel, and gate time, reverb send, or the hold mode. Hold mode is something if you're using a wave file or something like that, where you hold down the note of a keyboard, you hit the pad, it'll hold it, hit the pad again, it'll turn it off. Very simple to set this up now. And we have the alternate group numbers as well. Very high powered functions and very simple and easy with this user interface. Here's a great example of how we can edit a kit and change it to our liking. We can go into the detail and as we talked about stacking or layering a sound, let's just stack a sound on top of the snare drum. Very common, something that I've done before is using a tambourine for instance on there. So go into percussion voices, let's find a Pandera, let's like that. Now, we can take control of that by going in here, and we can change the volume of that layer. I like the Pandera, it's a little bit too much more, but let's get it to blend. There we go, enough snare drum. And let's go back and in tune the Pandera, see if we can get something else.
we want to go back into the kit and do more tweaking, for instance, let's tune down the toms. Again, we were able to easily adjust that. Now, if we go and save this in our user settings, we can name it whatever we'd like. And what's great about saving kits with the iOS app, you have a keyboard. It's very easy to do and name. Now that I've saved that, it's saved in the module. So, for instance, if you save some things that you're gonna use for a live situation, don't worry if your iOS device, maybe a battery dies, whatever happens, you forget to bring it to the gig, it's still going to be in your module, and you can still access it through the user kits, just as you normally would. If we go back out to this menu, you see the kit common. This can turn the hi-hat controller into a double bass. We have reverb sends and types, pad controls, um, tempo in the trigger setup link, which is very useful, especially with hybrid kits and things like that. And we can now take and copy all of our settings from one pad to another. Let's take a look at the menu options. If we press here, you can see we have mixer, pad settings, trigger settings, hybrid setup, kit finder, and Yamaha DTX.com. Lots of options here. Let's go into the mixer. This is an overall mix of the drum kit. Really useful if you're doing something in a live situation where maybe something's a little hot or to create an overall balance of the kit going out to a, a live sound situation. This is very useful. Turning the reverb up and down or even the song volume if you're playing along with some of the internal songs some various things you can do with the pad function. And in this case, let's assign Tom 2 to do something special. We could increase or decrease the kit number if we're playing live. For instance, we want to move on to the next kit after that song. We can do that with it. In this case, let's assign it to uh, turn the click on and off. So here we go. That's a really great function to have in a live situation. And you can do that to any pad or any trigger input in the back of the 502 module. You can see here you have your hi-hat, splash sensitivity, and closed foot position. That just adjusts the hi-hat for your preferences. And of course, we can go into the hybrid setup, which is also in another menu. Very helpful options. Let's go into the trigger settings. This is extremely useful when you're setting up a new pad or you have some triggers that you're going to put in the back of the 502 module. Maybe you're setting up one of our new hybrid packs. Here you can see that we have the trigger setup is for this drum kit. You can select that very easily. Or you can change your velocity curve or feel of the pad. If we go back out here, different types of pad. The pad type can vary if you're adding new pads to your drum kit. Or if we're setting up a new trigger. You can see here we have menu options for our DT triggers, whether it's a DT10 or DT20. And we have kind of some general drum trigger settings. Let's take a look at the hybrid setup menu. See, we click here. We can set up a hybrid kit quickly and easily. Whether we're adding a couple triggers to our drum kit or a couple pads around our acoustic drum set, this allows us to do that quickly and efficiently by answering a few questions. It's kind of like a hybrid setup wizard, if you will. The DTX502 module is the perfect module for your hybrid kit. Whether it's in one of our hybrid packs or you've got an existing 502 kit, this allows us to set up the triggers and pads very easily and very quickly. Whether you're an advanced user or even a beginner to this, it's very easy to do. Let's go in here, answer a few questions, and now you can see we go into all the trigger inputs on the back of the 502 module. I can set up the pad type very quickly, and then I can also set up the voice at the same time. Typically, this is a two-step process. We've turned this into one step, and now it asks us to play the pad and then it asks us to confirm if it feels good. Very quick, very efficient with the iOS app. Moving on to the Kit Finder menu, this is a great way to interface anything that's on your iOS device in terms of music. So for instance, we can pick a song, and the app will actually help us pick a few drum kits that may work for that genre of music. We can also play the song right from here. Remember, you're going to need to take the output of your iOS device and put it in the auxiliary in so you can play with that song. This is a great way to interface many of the songs on your iOS device, but also choose the kits that work best for that. The last option on the menu is a link to YamahaDTX.com. This is a site where users can gain great information about their DTX products and also exchange information. 
We're also going to have user settings for hybrid kits and also sounds that can be loaded into your DTX 502 module. Let's take a look at the data manager menu. If we tap there, you can see we have a few different options down here at the bottom. The first one is one kit. This allows us to upload a kit into the 502 module from our iOS device, YamahaDTX.com, or our Dropbox account. Likewise, we can take any one kit that's in the module and back that up or store it on our iOS device or to our Dropbox account. We can also import WAV files through our iOS device or our Dropbox into the 502 module. This is a very high-powered feature not normally found on a kit like the 502, but the DTX 502 module being able to import samples or WAV files, very unique at this level, and it's a great feature of the 502 module. You can also import some songs, and you can back up all of your data from the 502 module right onto your iOS device. And likewise, you can upload it from your iOS device to another module, or say you have to reinitialize the module, you can upload all that information right back up to your 502 module. Let's take a look at the list view menu. Right now we have the kits like this, in this format. If we go into list view, you can see they just kind of list them out this way. Makes it easy to engage a kit quickly, or again, we can use our data wheel to go between kits. There we go. What's really unique about this is we can create our own folders. So if we have multiple gigs that we use the 502 module on, we can actually create folders for each gig. And within each of those folders, we can create a favorites list of our kits, or if they happen to be user settings where we've named them after songs, we can set those up in an order that we play those songs on a live gig. Extremely useful and even fun for somebody practicing at home. They have their favorite kits that they use all the time. This is a great way to kind of access all those kits quickly. Let's take a look at the metronome options of the DTX 502 module with the DTX 502 Touch app. If we press right here, you'll see we go into another screen. This allows us to easily access all the functions of the metronome. We can turn the metronome on and off. We can even tap tempos right here on the screen. We can easily adjust the tempo and lock that in. We have the volume, time signatures, and we have user settings. We'll get to that in just a second. We have the various metronome options or sounds. When you go into the subdivisions menu, you can see all the different voices that we can select for the subdivisions, and you can see all the different volumes as we can control that quickly and easily, and even affect the tuning of all those subdivisions if that helps us. Once we have all of this set, we can actually save these settings. There's up to 30 user settings for the metronome. Normally, you wouldn't expect this much functionality from a free app. But with the DTX 502 Touch app, this truly enhances the user experience with already a great 502 module. You'll get more out of your 502 module and you'll spend less time editing and more time playing.